What's going on, guys? It's Jimmy here. Welcome to our daily show where we discuss everything going on here in our country that you need to know about on a daily basis, including money, investing, inflation, these unbelievable gas prices, and the next stimulus package, the Build Back Better package, which Joe Manchin has, well, <laughs> flip-flopped on so many different times. And, well, the latest news on this here, well, check this out. You see here, uh, Democratic Senator Joe Manchin was working with his Republican buddies. And, uh, well, apparently that has fallen through. Because, well, Joe Manchin's Republican buddies, realistically, I think most of us know that the Republicans didn't want to pass a bill right before the election. They weren't going to give the Democrats a win right before the elections because, well, the Democrats are in control of the House, the Senate, and the presidency. And, well, if they did that, then the Democrats would come back to the American people and, I mean, say, well, look what we did. I mean, in all fairness, the Republicans would do the same thing. So the bipartisan talks with Joe Manchin and the Republicans have fallen through. Bipartisan Senate energy talks for really a lot of different things in this uh, Build Back Better package, this energy package, a lot of different things that uh, were led by Senator Joe Manchin, a Democrat from West, West Virginia. They're essentially over with Republican senators convinced that Senator Joe Manchin is close to a reconciliation deal with Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer, according to people familiar with the matter. The death of the bipartisan approach will allow Senator Joe Manchin and Chuck Schumer to focus on a potential deal that includes green energy tax credits and tax increases to pay for them, a.k.a. the next reconciliation package. But any deal with that will need 49 other Senate Democrats, including the support of Senator Kirsten Sinema, dun, 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 who hasn't been directly involved with Joe Manchin and Chuck Schumer in any negotiations. And any Senate package will also need the House of Representatives and President Biden, who would probably sign off on anything the Senate would pass. Quote, Manchin informed us in the last meeting that reconciliation is probably the route he's going down. Wow. And in an interview with Axios last week, Manchin breathed new life into his talks with Schumer to rescue the climate and prescription drug element of build, <laughs> Biden's Build Back Better agenda. There's starting to become too many Bs in this uh, Biden's Build Back Better agenda, which is probably isn't even going to be called Build Back Better at this point. He called the talks encouraging, but cautioned that a final deal was far from finalized. <laughs> so Joe Manchin's Republican buddies have backed out of the deal. I mean, honestly, you could have... You could have seen this from a mile away. I mean, realistic, if you just look at this from a realistic point of view, it's very unlikely that the Republicans were going to pass a massive package like this right before the elections anyways. It's just not, it's just not realistic. Republicans think they're going to take back the House or the Senate or both. And uh, of course, if they do, then... Things are on very different terms. So, you know, things will be different. So, you know, of course, you know, uh, if the Republicans take back the Senate, then the Democrats lose their reconciliation card because it won't be a 50-50 Senate anymore. So Democrats need to use this reconciliation card to pass a final bill before this election, okay? Uh, and they need to put whatever they can in this package to pass whatever they can pass, basically with Joe Manchin and Kirsten Sinema's 
approval and the other, you know, 48 Senate Democrats, okay, because they need 50 votes. None of the Republicans will vote for it, no matter what anybody tells you. They're not going to get a single Republican vote on it. At, at this point, it's just almost impossible, okay? It's just it's just realistic, okay? Um, I mean, at, at some point, there was maybe a thought they could get one or two Republican votes, uh, like Murkowski or Mitt Romney. At this point, probably not. There is a possibility that there could be a child tax credit standalone bill, standalone bill, but not with a package deal with the Republicans. It, it would have to be a, a different a different situation, okay? Now, whether or not they include the child tax credits or stimulus check in in this package, they probably wouldn't even call it a stimulus check. They'd probably call it something different, a gas tax check, inflation relief check, something like a tax rebate. That's what uh, most of these uh, states are calling a tax rebate, something along those lines. Uh, in fact, you could just see this recent here. We have a lot of information here coming out here. White House weighs oil profit tax to fund a consumer rebate check. Uh, it's it's basically would be a stimulus check, tax rebate check, consumer rebate check, uh, whatever you want to call it. We have a lot of different uh, information coming out here uh, directly from the White House, different sources here. Uh, Biden administration considers a windfall tax on oil and gas profits. The UK, I just covered this in a previous video, the UK actually passed um a very similar bill like this. So the UK actually did this. So uh, you can see here a new proposal from House and Senate Democrats would impose quarterly tax on oil companies here. The Biden administration is reportedly considering the plan to help consumers who are struggling with high energy prices. Yeah, the National Deputy Director of the National Economic Council said, we are very much open to any proposal that would provide relief to consumers at the pump. This is directly from the White House. Uh, yeah, you can actually see right here, the news follows a similar move in the United Kingdom by their chancellor on May 26, so just a little bit over a week ago. They imposed a 25% windfall tax on North Sea energy producers to provide a $18.9 billion energy fund subsidy for Britons paying for soaring fuel costs. So the United Kingdom is taking action. Now we need U.S. Congress to take action. Whether they do it through the reconciliation pro uh, process with Joe Manchin, Kirsten Cinema, and actually show that we can get action done, or they do it through an executive order or something, or we actually get Republicans involved and get 10 Republicans involved. Now, remember, Democrats can pass this on their own in the House, and all they would need is 10 Republicans in the, um, in the Senate. And if no Republicans want to come involved, uh, you know, and, and pass something, Democrats do it on their own and do it through the reconciliation process. Or I'm not sure if this is something they could do through executive order or not. Uh, we will have to see. Or they do it through the reconciliation process. So one way or another, the United States needs to show that they can make some progress in action as well. All these other countries are doing something as well. We can't be the only country to not have action. All these other countries are making action as well on gun reform as well. All these other countries that have mass shootings have uh, not stopped it completely, but have dramatically whittled them down and lowered the amount of times they happened. And the United States is the only country that has it. And you know, the problem is, is that you question who's getting paid by the 
by the gun lobbyists and by the NRA. Who's getting paid by the gas companies? You know, and uh, I don't know. It's, uh, meanwhile, you know, our children in schools are getting shot. Yeah, it's, you, I mean, you you let me know your thoughts here in the comments, but it's just like, you know, lives are at stake here, people's livelihoods are at stake here, and do we let oil company oil companies and gas companies just make off with billions and billions and hundreds of billions of dollars of our money with gas and you know, this stuff is just going out. They, they, these gas companies just announced that they're going to spend tens of billions of dollars in shareholder buybacks. That's what they're doing with the money. So we just let them keep doing what they're doing or we do what other countries are doing and we say, nope, we're going to do a, uh, a gas price gouging bill, a, wind, a windfall profits gouging bill, or we do nothing. We just sit back and we just let them rake in the profits. You tell me. You tell me. Let them do nothing or we actually take action. And luckily we have um, a lot of governors and states that are proposing um, tax cuts, stimulus checks back, and are providing relief back to their residents. Uh, here's yet another one um, being uh, directly, as you can see here, from Oklahoma, actually. Governor Kevin Stitt, who is a Republican. Remember, I'm not from either party. So I'm just sharing you guys the news here and um, trying to get something passed to help Americans, whether it's Republicans or Democrats. Uh, Republican Governor Kevin Stitt says, with everything from milk to beef, to gas costing more, Oklahomans need relief, real relief, now. Here's what he says. Uh, and he stands in front of these signs that says, grocery inflation up 14%, 16%, up to 22%. And says that uh, also here, a grocery tax cut, $360, personal income tax cut, $93, Total savings per year, $453. In this column, he writes, he says, the 2022 legislative regular session ended last week, and I am proud that we were able to accomplish some major victories for people of Oklahoma. Since 2020, I have been pushing for a solution that will improve health outcomes for all Oklahomans. So I was thrilled to sign into law legis legislation that will create a new health care model in our state. Over the next few years, we will begin the transition to what's often called a managed health care system, which will improve sooner care, member satisfaction, invest in preventive and primary care, and increase cost predictability to the state. They said they have been working tirelessly to get this done, and we will continue to be dedicated towards improving the health of our state. He also signed Service Oklahoma into law, which will improve state government's customer service for Oklahomans. Anyone who needs assistance traveling with a disability or wants to apply for a real ID can log on to service.ok.gov in a few easy steps to get what they need. Never again will Oklahomans have to wait in line for hours just to renew their driver's license. That's pretty awesome, especially with a pandemic. You know, some people don't want to go in. At least this gives you a choice. Some people are disabled. You know, all that. That's a good thing to have, right? Help is coming soon for over 5,000 Oklahomans on a 13-year wait list for developmental disability services. That's unbelievable that there's a 13-year wait list. This year, we funded $32.5 million to end the wait list and increase provider rates. This investment is a testament that conservative leadership comes with a heart and places real value on people with developmental disabilities and their families in communities across Oklahoma. As governor, I said I would support all pro-life policy, and this is a validation of that commitment. This is a decades-long issue that we have finally come together to solve. 
In my state of the state address, I told Oklahomans we wanted to find a way to keep talented teachers in the classroom by paying the best six-figure salaries. Wow. I am proud to say we took steps toward that goal this year by enacting House Bill 4388 as our state continues to face teacher shortages challenges. We should pass laws that make Oklahoma the best state in the nation to teach. But more remains to be done. When the, when the 2022 budget first hit my desk, I was disappointed to see that there that rather than invest in real tax reform, there were two short-term fixes proposed by a one-time federally taxed $75 government checks to Oklahomans. In December, and a motor, motor vehicle sales tax that only brings relief to those who can afford to buy a new car. I vetoed them both and presented a real relief plan that calls for eliminating the state's grocery tax and reducing personal income tax. I am pleased that the legislature agreed that more work needed to be done for hardworking Oklahomans and will take up my inflation relief plan in a special session on June 13th. So that is coming soon for Oklahomans. Under my relief plan, the average family in Oklahoma will save $453 each year each year, he says, so that sounds like it's going forward as well. And families will start saving money as soon as the next time they go to the grocery store. With sky high rates and everything from milk to beef to gas costing more, families need real relief now. So we start cutting tax for all Oklahomans and should do so again this year, further reducing personal income tax rates for every single Oklahoman in each state and also help lure more Fortune 500 companies to our state and lowering the personal income tax rate as well. So these are the kind of things that each state is doing. If you've been watching my channel, I'm trying to cover each and every state as they come in. Each state's doing a little bit differently. As, as you kind of heard, he kind of vetoed a, a small $75 check. Um... And instead, he plans to do a package that is going to provide the average family a savings of what he says $453 of savings every single year uh, that they're going to be starting working on here in this next upcoming week. So I'll keep you up to date here. Remember, each state is kind of doing something a little bit different with their surplus of money or uh, flush with cash money, as a lot of these states say. So uh, I'll keep you up to date here, and hopefully that we'll see some uh, flush with cash money from the federal government here as well. So uh, make sure to subscribe down below to our YouTube channel. It's completely free to do so. Just click the subscribe button and then click the bell icon so you get uh, notifications when we go live with new videos, and uh, I'll keep you up to date here. You can also click this video next to see my new video on Social Security raises that I just did. And this is a new video I just did on uh, stimulus checks here as well. So click on one of those videos next. Thanks for watching, guys, and I will see you in the next video.